Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Okay, guys, I'm back. Listen, I really don't know how we are going to recover from um, if Donald Trump loses this this election. Um, when he loses, I should say, you know, and they put some crazy, if, if they, if he goes another four years, let me just say this first. If he goes another four years, it's over for black people, period. As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I mean, if we're already scattered enough. This is just going to magnify it even more. You got nobody in the course to support you. You got nobody that is willing to go to bat for us. People that look like you are against you. They're just Oreos and whatever else. So you, you have no chance of um having any kind of justice or any kind of equality. You know, and you're gonna see how close you're gonna go back to slavery if this man win again. Okay, so you don't have to believe it if you don't want to. You, it is what it is. I I told you what my plans are, and I really mean that. You check me out six months from now, okay? But anyway, with that being said, we're going to have to um, make a decision internally because we got to find something to unify on, I believe, as human beings. Um, right now, I'm... If, if this country was set up to do what we want to have done, then it wouldn't be America. America has to dump on somebody. It has to have a low caste. I mean, it has to have this caste system that you want to keep going. And so it can run like a fine uh, oil tune machine. Or you're going to have to dismantle, tear down uh, the system that we are using today. There's no way in the world we can um, survive this way. So now I'm so specifically speaking to brown black people. Black, brown. I ain't even talking about the separation because of some reparations and none of that. Get that out your mind right now. This is not the, this is not that conversation. This conversation is if you got brown skin, black skin, you are going to be hunted in this country. You are going to be exploited even more in this country. You are not going to have the backings of the courts at all, at all, uh, to come to your rescue. And so they're going to be framing this kind of stuff any kind of way. And then you've got a William Barr. If Donald Trump doesn't dismiss him, uh, <laughs> who thinks it's a joke? Okay. And then again, I keep talking about that Jesse Ventura uh, conspiracy show where they had all of those caskets. And I ain't going to never forget it. Box caskets for a rebellion. That's the only thing I could think of. An uprising. They had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of wooden containers. They look like body uh, containers. That's what they use them for, basically. Um, and I see that coming for for us as long as we sit up here and keep talking about stupid stuff like, well, she not brown enough. Well, um, I want to get my reparations. You damn fool, it ain't going to be no country. So if you are not prepared to fight, and I don't mean just verbally. If you are not prepared to fight physically, you might as well forget about that talk. Because people talk about what's on the board right now in California. That ain't what it is. That's like that HR 40. That uh, Proposition 16 in California. Duh. Duh. To me, is in my opinion, is no better, no different than waiting on the HR 40 that uh Conyers had introduced 30 years. And they're just not talking about it. Y'all about to fall for the okie doke again. I can't even take it no more. 
I really can't. I can't watch it anymore. So I try to find safe spaces um, and listen and limit my conversations with people who are just hell bent, hell bent on foolishness, spinning our wheels in madness. Okay, because what Donald Trump has done to this country in the last four years, in in with his obsession with Obama. And all the policies that he did, um, and just the people he's put in positions. Look at Bessie DeVos. Okay. With that being said, I don't know if this country can ever get back to any kind of normalcy. It's too much. Um, and it's going to take a movement to overthrow all of this uh, madness. And if you're not going to do right by um, black people, it's over. The Adolf's the people, the descendants of slaves, are, uh, cannot go on. Y'all have stole all the wealth from them. Us. You can, it, it, it can't keep going on this way. And common sense should tell you that all the great empires have fallen. But you're hard-headed, stiff-necked, and rebellious. And you don't want to see what is right there in front of your face. That is insane. That is really insane. You can't keep doing this to people. You know, it's the next hustle. Now, and don't get me wrong. I'm not in some dreamland about what's going on in any other place. Because anywhere... <sighs> It said that the European is gone. He's gone and made a mess of it. He's made a mess even out of paradise. So I'm quite aware of what the problem is on the planet. But it's almost like Bob Marley said it. You got to be ready to deal with, we got to run those crazy ball heads out of town. If you're not willing and ready, I don't know. It looks very grim for me from where I sit. And I hope y'all can prove me wrong. I want you to prove me wrong. There's an election going on, what, in two days? No, in one day. <laughs> I voted already. Listen, I don't know what kind of chaos it's going to bring. But I do know one thing. Joe Biden should be winning by a landslide. So what's going to be the aftermath between after the election and until the 20th of January? What are the American people going to do? Y'all already see the damage this fool has done. And it's like, who is allowing this to go on? Who? Y'all, this, this, this two-party system is a mess. The Republican Party cannot sustain itself. To keep allowing this stuff to go on. How can y'all come back after this? And the people that support this kind of stuff. How can you look at your neighbor? Because there were pretty people all throughout time. Like Viola Luso or Tom Brown. You know. I, I mean the list goes on and on. About for white people who knew. Where their place was in terms of the human family. You know, they need tweaking, of course. They still need tweaking, but their heart is in the right place. You know, I heard somebody uh, try to get mad at, uh, they did. They, they, they checked Jane Elliott as they should have um, when she said that the Native American should be getting uh, reparations before black people because this is their country. I understand what she meant, however wrong she is. And to be for her to be proven wrong is and she was, but she, uh, that doesn't mean she got all the answers. But she's still an ally. Same thing with Tim White. There's a lot of things you can pick out with these people, and you can still crack their white supremacist views. But they they've been indoctrinated in America too. But but it's still okay because at least they somebody you can have a conversation with, and then you can break down that. See, because Jane Elliott really thought that she was saying something when she said that. But she wasn't. 
You know, she wasn't. She was actually letting us see, you know, where her, what her thought was in terms of us being financially or equality-wise being compensated for what had happened. And that's still okay. Because that don't mean they gonna have the she gonna have the mindset of me or you because it's not in her cellular member. It's in ours. It's in our cellular memory, not hers. So um, I'm not gonna get mad at Jane Elliott. I'm still going to res uh, respect and thank her for having a not having a black heart. And, and, and it's important that we remain objective that way. Because if we don't, then the devil is one. You know, I know we have to do collectively. And I know good and well. When you look at people like Daniel Cameron, you know damn well everybody ain't on code. So is it, if what is the code? The code is, in my opinion, is people knowing that they got to break down this elite class. And if they're not willing to do that, then they're not on code. Because when you got people, and, and don't get me wrong, there has to be um, a, a, a respect and a, a warning for your own clan. Because if everybody was to do right by themselves and they people, we would all be okay. Not trying to manipulate. That don't mean Jane Elliott got to try to be black and I got to try to be white. And or, no, that is not what that, what that means. That means if we all have a healthy respect for one another and our cultures and the beauty that we all bring when we come to the table, then now we can get along. But if you're going to try to dump on me and crap on me and manipulate me and my people, then you'll have a problem with me. And that's just simple because you wouldn't take it. In fact, there's no way in the world this stuff could be reversed. But, but. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Keep playing. It is starting to get cold in the Midwest, y'all. Excuse me, I had to. Y'all already know the routine when I have to leave, so. It's very cold, starting to get cold here in the Midwest, and, oh, my assistant didn't show up. So here I am trying to manage these pooches alone, um, which is kind of difficult. Y'all know I got Abu and Mufasa up on the third, what is it? They on the first, second, third. They on the fourth floor. And uh, Daisy is down here with me because Daisy just experienced her first heat. So probably this time next year, she'll be a mommy. And of course, you know, I got a pregnant Peppa, Labasia. So I got my hands full this morning, but that's what keeps me young. That's what keeps me active. That's what keeps me engaged with the young people. And I just love it. So with that being said, um, I'm back. But what I was trying to say, you guys, you know, given account to the last four years, I mean, we got to really be honest. Those of us who see us as a civilized society and those who just see us as just what the white man do, that's what the white man is. Um, There are a lot of white people that want to get away from white people, but they don't have anywhere to go. Right. Because, um, you know, it's just the way it is. But that's not my concern right now. My concern right now is we have to begin to identify all these people in our community that are really hurting us. And that uh, that goes for the people that we elect and put into office. You know, I wish I did have a job or once you vote me in, nobody ever evaluates the work I've done. and They keep voting for me or not voting for me every three, four, four or six years. That is an amazing concept to me. You give them all these perks with taxpayer dollars and y'all vote for these people and you don't even check and hold their feet to the fire because that's really what's wrong. And instead of you just shooting down the whole uh, uh, political game, 
That's what you're supposed to do. But see, y'all won't do that, and that's why I can't play with you no more. I really can't. Because all you got to do is hold. But you're, you're so in love with personalities, you know, that it's hard. So if you put a Lena Taylor in office, and or if you put a, a Gwen Moore in office, and they're not doing nothing, or you can't see anything, any kind of legislation that they got anybody to sign on with, and they're up in Madison or up in Washington, D.C., get their asses out. But we're so busy going, oh, yeah, we're kissing up. Oh, I know Lena. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah, uh, 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 Gwen Moore. Oh, yeah, she used to be on welfare with me. And you fall in love with the story and stop looking at the substance from the person. And, it, and it's really sad that we operate like little kids when it comes to politics. So I'm done with that. I learned my lesson. They say. When you keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again and don't get no damn results, that's insanity. So I'm not going to keep being insane following, thinking that some going to come aboard and some ain't. But the majority of them that needs to come aboard is working against me. And we don't even have the wherewithal to clean it out. Don't know how, won't even have the will to clean it out. Because... um. Who was that? Marcus Garvey always said, get up, you mighty nation. You can accomplish what you will. But what do you will to accomplish? What? Listen, y'all not going to get my blood pressure up this morning. Um, the bottom line is um, a lot of y'all said, I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. And I don't know how I got on this subject, but let me just go ahead and finish it out. Um, and I'm saying to myself. When they get to that level, white or black, can you trust any of them? You can't trust none of them unless you're willing to put, hold their feet to the fire and keep coming. Like those riots that you just do every time you reactive, every time somebody get killed. See, my dad did the turn up on us since George Floyd got killed. We can't do nothing about it, right? So, you cannot... Um, look at this and not see Willie Lynch's prediction coming it, it, uh, manifesting itself to pass. I'll keep them perpetually miserable. I, I've taught them to hate each other, their self, so they're not going to agree, they're not even going to trust themselves ever, because we've taught them not to, and so there's so many dynamics going on here, at, first of all, before we can even join the society at large, because you know there's a lot of things going on internally with us that Makes it hard and difficult to communicate with, let alone get involved with politics or something else that requires a, you know, a unified front. So, but with that being said, y'all, I'm gonna come back with another video um, a little later, and we're gonna talk about some of the today's headlines that really got me. All right, I'll see you in the next video.